everyone and welcome back to our lecture so now we are in part two of our, our lecture four on quality management so recall a little bit our last lecture we actually talked about uh, in the last part we talked about eight dimensions of quality management and then we talked about internal and external failure our takeaway is that i hope you guys can quality um, can identify and group that conformance durability reliability and performance are the four order qualifying um, dimensions and order winning dimensions are features, serviceability, aesthetics, and perceived quality, which is your brand image and status. And external costs, lo especially long-term external costs, is much more damaging, is much more costly to your company compared to your internal cost. Okay, so today we're going to continue with our part two, and remember after this part we have a part three on quality management, and so this lecture on quality is basically split into three different parts three different videos and in the next lecture we'll get to new product innovation and we'll compare a traditional approach to a new kind of a 20th um 20th 21st century approach to see their differences and to decide which one should we adopt for your company so now let's continue with our top quality management class okay so quality can be broken down into technical dimension and organizational dimension so in a company you know like even for this course on supply chain management, we are separating this course into a technical course and a managerial and strategical course. Because supply chain management is a subject that can be technical in terms of calculations, statistic, analysis, but it can also be strategic. Like what I'm teaching this 10 lecture course on supply chain management 101 is actually a managerial and strategic course aiming to kind of train and give you a better idea if you want to aim for a job in as a manager in the future. But definitely, there are definitely courses for technical aspect, just like for quality management, there are both aspects which include technical dimension, organizational dimension. So in a technical dimension point of view, um, quality circle is definitely the first um, point that you have to be clear about. Then we move on to statistical process control, SPC, and we have to um, analyze using the Six Sigma. So technical dimension is really about how to ensure um, technology um, are working efficiently for quality control um, for determining the quality of the product so quality circle is a technical term that we'll introduce a bit maybe later or uh, later and statistical process control is basically a really broad technical subject that is about how can i use statistics how can my business apply statistics to um to boost the quality of my product because analysis and this technical parts this technical work are definitely important in determining the problems in the system the problems with your product and they are definitely crucial for in the learning process that we discussed in our learning capability lecture if you can recall in lecture three and then the six sigma i want to show you what is a six sigma but firstly give you a short definition so the definition of six sigma is really straightforward is to use a series of techniques of a processes in order to identify and prevent our future um, potential errors and defects on your product so the first as we can see the first pardon me for the sound okay the first process in a uh, six sigma is basically define after define we are measure the problem we analyze the problem with statistical measure which I ca uh, which which can be an uh, implementation or application of a uh, SPC, and then we will have pardon. After measuring, after measuring, after analyzing, sorry, pardon me, pardon me. After analyzing, we will be trying to improving of our product, and last we will do a control. So this is basically the process of a six sigma. Although there are five parts, it is called the six sigma. So. So these are the processes for technical dimension of uh, quality management. In the organizational point of view, this is about how do a manager apply his employees or her employees to try aim for quality, top quality management. So first of all, co command control with a top-down approach is definitely really important. So the command control is basically about giving command because if if you are a manager and you have some subordinates working for you, you can definitely delegate the task because you have the authority to do so. They are, they are, although they are not forced, but they kind of have the um, they have the responsibility to do work for you. If you are kind of a manager and they are subordinates working for you, so definitely your yeah, command approach is definitely important. In your company, so you assign tasks for your employees to uh, work on um, 
work on fields related to quality control, quality measurements. It can be analysis, and it can be uh, you you it can be how to use some uh, designs, how to use the uh, technologies um to kind of a uh, boost our quality improvement. Then in this process is motivation scheme or we uh, incentive or I we say uh, incentive alignment is crucial because it's really important to mo be able to motivate employees into working for the company, so into improving the quality for the company. And then we are going to, as a manager, you have to try to empower customer orientation. What do I mean by that? It's basically you have to give more, assign more responsibility to those employees who have close contact with your customers. This is really important because those who have close contact to the customers will get a better idea of what are the preferences of the customers, um, um, which can help you increase the quality of your product by increasing the utility as we discussed in our last part. Utility is definitely related to how good customers perceive your quality of your product. So although you are a manager, you have a lot of authority, you can make decisions. In this case, you have to empower authority to those who have close contact to the customers. They can be marketing workers, workers from the marketing department. Um, it can be people who are doing sales, who are, have direct contact to the customers, or customers are all the employees who are conducting or, or working on market research. So it's definitely important to direct and delegate some power, delegate some authority for these people, and, and try to give some incentive as well. So when they, uh, when they finish, they may be day-to-day -day conversation with the customer. They can go back to discuss with the supply chain department, discuss with you and other executives, other managers, and he may share, he she may share some ideas related to how can I um, share some ideas related to what can we do? Because um, from what we found out, the customers like, the customers prefer, the customers want our products to have, then we try to implement this um, into our products as kind of a features, as kind of a functions, maybe as kind of aesthetics aspect as well. So we try to uh, empower these uh, employees who have customer orientation opportunities. And then we are trying to improve our, and then we have to build our organization into a learning organization. If we recall from last lecture, we discussed about learning capability, and in learning capability, we actually focused about what is a learning organization. A learning organization is basically a company that acquires knowledge and use it for further learning, or use the knowledge to apply to solve to have more to solve problems with new insights and knowledge. So it's definitely important as you learn, not only learn from the customer's requirement, but also learn from any problems that your products in the past have, learn from any existing problems um, in your company, in your system. So after you conduct learning, maybe single loop, double loop, maybe more in-depth learning, maybe more shallow learning, you, you, sh you should try to apply what you obtain, what you acquired from learning, this knowledge and this, um, this knowledge, this capability, and this um, reflections, evaluations into developing better quality products. So I would say this is a really important technical dimension, organizational dimension. Uh, as a participant of this course here, I hope you guys can focus on more the organizational dimension because it is more straightforward as you guys are already able to understand this because they are more linked to the core of our course, which is a managerial and strategical um, supply chain management course. For the quality circle, SBC and Six Sigma is more for the information technology department to understand or if you are um, um, if you are aiming to become a technical person, which is also a valuable asset, a valuable job position, because companies need people like that. If you're aiming to learn and in this path rather than more of a managerial path of a business administration path, you can definitely attend more lessons or in your own time you can read more about statistical process control and Six Sigma. Here I'll suggest a bit of a uh, book for you. So this is uh, AP Statistics. What can you see? This is an uh, AP Statistics books. So in this kind of book, you are going to uh, learn more related to statistics, and I think they can really help you with um, business administration as well, because statistics is really important in the business world and the finance world and the economics world. You need a lot of, um, as I am a finance student as well, you need a lot of statistics in order to identify and measure the risk, which we call as a var um, which we call as a variability in finance to make uh, optimal and better investment decision. In economic statistics, is definitely important in tr for public economies, for microeconomies as a nation, and definitely for businesses. Statistics are also important, and that is the application in microeconomics. And definitely in our course in supply chain management, statistics are both important in marketing, 
in sales orientation, in uh, business goals, um, in analysis, evaluations of product, and it's definitely really important in learning about your system um, in terms of application to learning. Whether you conduct single loop, double loop learning, or different aspects, you have to have a statistic. So you can take more courses on your own time if you are interested in statistics, want to learn more about statistical uh, process control, SBC, Six Sigma, you can definitely go deeper in this subject. Okay, so now let's look at the quality improvement dynamics. So is quality free? Definitely no. Um, a really important um, message for you guys to understand is that as a manager or as a person who have authority to make investments inside a company to uh, allocate the assets of the company is really important to think about the long run. Why is it really important to think about the long run? Because sometimes sometimes managers are, are really desire to see short-term benefits. This is acceptable because sometimes short-term benefits can be important for cash flow and so, and I'm not saying that short-term benefits are not good, but sometimes you can save some costs for short-term benefits like uh, cash flow, you need to save some cash flow to pay debts, to buy some equipment, to run your machineries, buy your electricity, but more, in most circumstances, investing in the long run is definitely more important because investing in the long run basically means you can see more benefits as time goes and your company in terms as a whole have more chances to level up in your higher position when you spend money in employee training, spend money in quality determining, quality improvement, so you boost more customer loyalty, you can improve more of the employee's motivation, something like that, employee's loyalty as well. So spending money on employee training, employee, um, spending money on quality assurance, quality improvements are definitely important and effective in the long run for your business. So really, you have to keep this in mind if you are someone working in the management industry. So if we look at this graph here, here is actually um, kind of a um, uh, logical, logical cycles. So let's see. When we input resources for quality improvement, we try to improve the quality, and we're able to improve our customer perception, customer loyalty. After that, we can improve our sales. After that, we can improve more profit. So this is the first cycle that I want to emphasize to you guys that improving your profits, sorry, improving your quality can in the long run improve your profits by improving more sales, but from impro the improvement of customer loyalty, customer's perception. And in this cycle right here, you can see that when you improve your quality, there's a higher um, innovation capability, which means there's a possible innovations that can help you to save some cost, and there can be process improvement, and at last, you can save some cost. One example can be about renewable energy sources. Some government, especially the government in developed nations, don't encourage their uh, companies to use uh, um, re non-renewable energy sources like fuel, natural gas, and coal, and then the businesses are experiencing an issue. It is because they, don't, um, they, they believe that renewable energy are too expensive, but if they um, adopt non-renewable energy, they will be fined heavily by the government. So sometimes when we try to improve the quality, some innovation can be definitely really important, especially when our Um, and of, sorry, uh, innovation is definitely really important. Sorry for that. Don't know what happened. Innovation is important, especially in the modern world, because sometimes sustainability has become more important um, than before. Because in the last century, in the industrial revolution, the economy was a focus point and employment. But now, as people's wealth, average wealth rises, it is really important to be able to manage about the innovation because sustainability will be an issue, and many governments will take actions to limit the use of a kind of unethical business activities. So sometimes with innovation, you can improve your process. Like some companies are able to adopt and maybe a bit ex expensive but really effective solar energy kind of a system to um, supply electricity for production uses. So sometimes that can save you many costs as well. So this is a cycle, and this cycle actually goes in a positive way because the focus point of this cycle is that they believe the quality improvement can improve, increase the profit. But is this a way that happens to all the companies? Definitely no. Only about 10% of business in the world success or even less. Most startups either fail or have a little money that they cannot operate in the further term. This is because sometimes quality improvement can be costly. If you as a manager put a lot of money investing in uh, a lot of money invest in your business to try to improve the car um, try to improve the quality it may not show effects for example if your quality is still not up to the standard yet but you have spent a lot of money your lawyer your sales may not improve and you actually have more cost than profits so then you are making a loss so I'm going to emphasize here quality improvement is um, definitely effective in the long term it's definitely the positive and right way to go but 
especially for small businesses, it can be really hard because you have to spend a lot of time and money and uh, and personnel in order to improve your quality. And, and your, your quality as a small business or a business who lacks of technical skills, especially if you don't have elite workers, if you don't have those high paying engineers, it is really hard. It can be hard that your quality is still uncompetitive, still low compared to your competitors. That's why small business are really likely to fail. They don't have enough assets. They don't have enough money to hire these workers and compare compete to the existing companies, they may fail um, very fast, so you have to understand more about that. Okay, so this is a part two of our um, um, quality management course. So um, uh, in this lecture, we discussed about quality management in terms of a technical aspect and organizational aspect. Then we discussed about the quality improvement dynamic, um, whether um, which we conclude that long run is definitely important for quality improvement. And in the next part, in part three of this lecture, we'll focus on more of a graphical and more technical parts. I mean, more technical part in terms of technical analysis and logic, not about the technical aspect. Because sometimes we, um, pardon me. Um, this is because uh, technical staff and some logical staff are really important in making strategies for your businesses. Like in this case, we're using some um, technical aspects, using some basic uh, logical analysis to um, strategize what you're going to do. Um, and then uh, we'll work on uh, analytical perspective. And then last, we'll talk about statistical process control and more in overall part three. So stay tuned and we'll discuss more of this in our part three of our lecture four on quality management. I'll see you then.